Alright, here it is. Friday afternoon. Inside Wrestling Radio in the house for you. Myself, Charlie Lane, and Ricky Regal. Start the show, Ricky Regal. It is New Year's Eve. Charlie, can you believe it? We are at the end of 2010. We've made it, Charlie. We got through a year and without killing each other. How are you feeling on this New Year's Eve? I feel great. I feel like we're going to have a good year coming up. Yep. And we're going to close out this year. Special New Year's Eve show Absolutely. inside Wrestling Radio. Absolutely. It is New Year's Eve. Uh, we're, what, about eight hours, Charlie, from 2011. And uh, we don't know what the next year brings us, but we do know what last year brought us. And uh, in this edition of the program, we're going to run down some of the last year's biggest events. We're going to run down a couple of uh, awards here that have come up at the end of every year. And uh, we also have uh, Thomas Simpson he, he does a yearly uh, breakdown of his thoughts on the uh, on the last year, and I have that in front of me. He's not here today, so I'm going to read his ideas on uh, the end of the year stuff. And remember, that's Thomas's opinion, not, not mine. Not. <laughs> exactly. So, so Charlie, uh, let's get right into this thing. Uh, uh, and again, uh, we wish everybody a prosperous and happy new year in uh, 2011. We uh, we're going to get right into this stuff right now, Charlie. Kellen Independent Wrestling, yeah, used to be a, a, a big website, and they've recently they shut down earlier this year. But uh, every year, the big deal coming out of CIW was the uh, the awards that they would give away. Right. And and in past in recent uh, history and. And in fact, they used to uh, poll. I have a, a board that we talk about from time to time here, what we call the Regal Board. Right. And uh, and from time to time, they would actually poll members of that board because at one time that was one of the biggest uh, wrestling boards in, in this area. And they would actually poll some of my people on the board there and would get their opinion on uh, who they thought would be, you know, the promotion of the year and actually right, do right. it legitimately. This year, they, I'm they, not they, so sure. I think they backed off of that a little bit. And not a slight at CIW. They, they do good work over there. And like I said, it used to be a, a big website, but they, they shut down. And I, and I think another guy may have taken it over. And, but it's still using the CIW Independent uh, Awards name and title. Yeah, I saw a little bit on Facebook, not to interrupt you, about that, and uh, where they had talked about them shutting down and coming back. And somebody said, yeah, it's great. I'm glad you brought it back. And yeah, and, and it was a, a good thing. I mean, they, they did good work over there, like I said, and, and they kept that thing updated. Uh, but this year's awards are a little bit different, and it, and, it, and it, you know we're a little bit one sided. Yeah, we're going to run them down here, and, and we're going to go by them one by one. There's 13 categories we're not going to do the who was up for the award but we're going to give you the winners and uh some some of the winners it just seems to us just at, at a cursory glance that they may possibly have all come from the same organization yeah go figure, huh? <laughs> so you know we'll talk about it and we'll go in depth on it a little bit here but we're gonna we're gonna start running down uh, some of these uh, awards in this first segment here, Charlie, and, and give us start it out with us. Who was the announcer of the year from uh, according to Carolina Independent Wrestling? According to Carolina Independent Wrestling, the announcer of the year was Brett Wolverton. Brett Wolverton, I can I can agree with that because Brett is a good announcer, um, and he travels. He doesn't announce for just one corporation. He goes to many of them. Sure, he, you know he gets out there and he does a lot of shows. He came down and did our Christmas show was a year before last, Correct. and did a fantastic. Fantastic job! I was actually glad to see Brett when he showed up uh, because he is a good uh, an announcer. For several years there, um, Eddie Rich, who people may know as the Great ER, he uh, was announcer of the year, and and Eddie did a great job. I think that kid really had a future had he not gotten burned out on the business. But yeah. I think he he may have gotten a little bit burned out on the business and may not. Um, May not love wrestling as he once did. I haven't talked to him, so I don't know what his problem with wrestling is. But anyway, uh, this year's winner, of course, Brett Wolverton. Who's the? Uh, what's your next category over there? Comeback of the year for 2010 was Jay Batista. Comeback of the year. Now that one to me would entail an individual who maybe had been gone for a while, and mm -hmm. uh, then then you know uh, maybe had gotten out for whatever reason, health problems, whatever, right. and then comes back and really just just blows the world away, right. As far as I know, Charlie, Jay Batista hasn't been anywhere. <laughs> that's, that's what I would say. I've booked him a couple times before in the past, and, and then he kind of just fell off the radar. I didn't hear anything else from him. And, you know, I've gone through a couple different bookers since I last used him, and you know, neither one of them has said anything about it. Well, the fact of the matter is, is I, I haven't heard his name even brought up since uh, the Christmas show here two years ago. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I don't know where he's come back to <laughs> or what he came back <laughs> from. from. <laughs> but congratulations to Jay Batista for the uh, for the comeback of the year. What's next? 
All right, let's see. Next one we got here is Cruiserweight of the Year. Cruiserweight of the Year, and that winner is? That winner is Derek Rise. Now, before we get too much into this one, yeah. we're coming up on a break. Coming up on a break. All right, when we get back from the break, we'll talk more about Derek Rise there, and, and uh, we'll go through the rest of the uh, the bigger winners there of CIW. We'll talk a little bit more about uh, the Carolina Independent Wrestling, and I'll run and go over some of uh, Thomas's year-end uh, things as well. Uh, Charlie, big New Year's Eve show. We'll be right back right here on Inside Wrestling Radio to help you ring in. 2011. All right, here we are coming back with Inside Wrestling Radio. That's right, right back at you on the Inside Wrestling Radio, doing a little uh, hardcore, bringing in with that old lang sign there, Charlie. Uh, bringing, yeah, bringing us back from the break. They're gonna gonna do those fireworks tonight, Charlie. Gonna sing some song, maybe have a little uh, champagne. To, to, to bring in 2011? I don't think I'll get to. I have to ride around in a little black car all night tonight. Oh, okay. So you won't get there. You won't be able to bring it on in uh, New Year's style. I got you. Well, no. Nah. You know, if you do go out partying tonight, uh, listeners and fans, please be careful. Please uh, grab yourself a designated driver. Uh, we want to keep you around in 2011, uh, just like we had you here in 2010. So it, I, I want everybody to celebrate, and I want everybody to have a great new year. But at the same time, we want you to be safe, too. So keep that in mind. Get your friends here at the Inside Wrestling Radio is kind of trying to look out for you, Charlie. Yeah, because tonight, when I ride around, I'm going to be looking for people who are drinking and driving. Although I really love to meet you, I wouldn't want it for you riding in the back seat of my car on the way to the Johnson <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pension Center. Charlie breaking a little kayfabe there, giving up the real-life job. All right, yeah. Charlie, let, let's get back into the, the big Carolina Independent 2010 uh, uh, doggone, yeah, rundown here of their awards and our opinion on that. Charlie, we were All up right. to Cruiserweight of the Year, and we announced Derek Rise as the yes, Carolina right. Independent Wrestling uh, uh, Cruiserweight of the Year. I like Derek. Uh, Derek's a good kid, and, and I don't have a problem with that uh, that award. Well, I don't really have a problem with the award. The only thing is uh, I've booked one, and although he is my world champion right now, and that's not why I'm being so one-sided on it, I would kind of lean a little bit more towards Stony Hooker. And the reason being is Stony travels a good bit more. If you go and look at Stony's Facebook, he's got pictures from all over the place. Sure. And he, I mean, he, I have seen him work. He puts heart and soul in everything he does. And I think he may have been a little bit better candidate than Derek. Nothing against Derek. That's just my opinion. Yeah, well, you know, and and uh, and that's what we're here doing this for. We're trying to run down our opinions. And I, and I do kind of agree with you, Stony. Uh, that kid has been everywhere, and actually, Stoney went up and did a WW, a couple of WWE tryouts this year that a lot of people don't even know about, and got some good feedback. So, um, I, I think I'm gonna have to agree with you on that one, Charlie. I don't have a problem with Derek winning the award because Derek is a good kid and has a bright future. But I, I do agree that uh, that were at my awards, uh, Stoney may have uh, clinched that one. Who's next? All right, next we got Female of the Year Award. Female of the Year Award. All right, this is Carolina Independent Wrestling's Female of the Year, Charlie. Who is it? Kimberly Spade. I don't know Kimberly Spade. Can't speak on her. I've never seen her, never heard of her. Well, tell me about Kimberly Spade. I, um, she, whenever I had a previous booker, she was on my show. Um, she have, I have seen her in the ring. I disagree with this one completely and totally, not because I have any beef with Kimberly or anything like that. I just think there are other female performers out there who were a little better at uh, further along, a little better at the craft than she is, uh, a little bit more schooling, a little bit more training, and I think, yeah, it would be a good call. But for this year, I think there's other females out there. So she may have been a better female rookie of the year yeah, instead of female yeah, of the year. Exactly, gotcha. exactly. Yeah, I can't speak to Kimberly Spade because I've never seen her work and never really uh, heard of her before right now. So so I don't know. Uh, I can't say much about Kimberly Spade, but uh, but uh, congratulations to her for her big uh, big doggone uh, award there. Who else you got, Charlie? All right, now we got Feud of the Year. Feud of the Year. This is from Carolina Independent Wrestling. Their Feud of the Year winner is... John Schuyler versus Bob Keller. All right, I don't know John Schuyler. I don't know Bob Keller. Uh, so I can't... I know Bob Again, Keller. can't comment on this one. What you got? I know... I saw a little bit when I went down to Old School Championship Wrestling of the feud between John Schuyler and Bob Keller. I do know Bob Keller. He is a very good heel, as we say in the business. Um, he knows how to work the crowd. I've, I've seen him. He does good. He he puts it in his heart into it as well. He's done several comedy spots. <clears throat> I agree with Bob. John Schuyler, I don't know if I'd agree with that feud. I think there may be a feud or two that may have rivaled it, but sure. I can't really say at this point. Gotcha. All right, let's move on. Who's next? 
All right, next we got manager of the year. Manager of the year. All right, this is a, this is a guy who, for people who may not be familiar with the old school, there used to be a thing called a manager in wrestling. Yeah, <laughs> and he, he would come down with you. He would help you get your match over. He would talk for you in some cases. So, uh, and if you were a bad guy, he would help you win. He may or may not get involved in your match. Who is the CIW manager of the year for 2010, Charlie? That would be Reginald Vanderhoff. Reginald Vanderhoff. Reginald was a big contributor and a board mon- uh, moderator on my uh, regal board that we talked about earlier and uh, never met Reginald in person. Uh, he seems like he, he knows the business pretty well. Uh, again, I think this is more of a regional or, or, or a company award than it is a, a, a complete Carolina coverage yeah. award because uh, Reginald, again, as far as I know, only works for one company. And that's old school. Right. And so nothing against Reginald, but again, I think this kind of speaks to, and, 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 you know, the fact of the matter is there's not that many managers out there. So, so, you know, congratulations to Reginald. I'm, I'm, great job. <laughs> on, our, on our last 30 seconds, I will say I have booked Reginald before. Yeah. He, he is a good manager. He knows what he's doing and everything. Um, Basically, he's taken up the Jim Cornette type of uh, gimmick. He comes out with the tennis racket, wearing uh, the suit and everything, mama boy, rich boy type deal. But he d- he does very well at it. I mean, he could he could pa- pull it off if they wanted to run another. If we needed uh, another Jim Cornette. Exactly. Fantastic. Gotcha. All right, Charlie, we're up on a break. We're going to continue. We're doing a little bit different uh, today of how we're doing the show. And uh, we're going to uh, run straight through. We'll do the rest of the awards, and then we'll get into some national stuff, and then we'll talk about some other things. All right, we're going to still helping you ring in 2011 right here on Inside Wrestling Radio. All right, here we are back, Inside Wrestling Radio, New Year's Eve, bringing in a heavy metal rocking New Year for you guys. <laughs> right, we got the, we got Dick Clark's Rockin' Eve tonight, and we got Charlie Lane's Rockin' Eve right here on Doggone Inside Wrestling Radio. <laughs> Charlie, I had to run back in the studio right here, but the break almost caught me. I was out there shooting off a few fireworks trying to get the party started a little bit early. Uh, this afternoon, so uh, you got to get me back in here while I'm out there with my fireworks before the the break ends. There, Charlie, next next time, okay? All right. All right. I we, guess I have to. Yeah, well, you know, I, try, I know you're trying to lock me out the studio. And you're trying to steal my gimmick and, and and lock me out and fire me and all that stuff. But uh, anyway, welcome back in. Uh, we're, we're we're doing the show a little bit differently today, Charlie. Normally, this would be the national news segment, and we will get to some national news. There's some stories I, I really need to cover. Uh, but we're going to continue on right now with the uh, year-end Carolina Independent Wrestling Awards. And, Charlie, you know what? If we're around this time next year, and, right. you, and you know we've been <laughs> we, we we're don't know, struggling here. We don't know from day to day if we got a job here at WLBG or not. But if we're here uh, next year, we may do a in, uh, Inside Wrestling Radio year-end well, awards because, uh, because we actually do cover all the uh, local stuff. We, we cover J. Eagle, we cover NCW, we cover your shows, yeah. and we've covered OCW, uh, OSCW, I'm sorry. That's right. But, uh, you know, we, we may do it a little bit differently this next year uh, when we're a little bit more established in the business of, of, of running these things down. But this year, we're covering the Carolina Independent Wrestling Awards, and uh, when we left off, we had uh, congratulated Reg- Reginald Vanderhoff for winning yeah. Manager of the Year, and we're up on Most Improved of 2010, Charlie, and who is the Most Improved Wrestler, according to Carolina Independent Wrestling of 2010? That would be Nicholas Gabriel. Nicholas Gabriel, all right. I you, hope you know who that you is. you know Nicholas Gabriel? No, I have no clue. <laughs> all right, I've never heard of Nicholas Gabriel. I'm sure he's a fine, outstanding individual, and congratulations to him on his Most Improved Award. Who's next? All right, next we got best new promotion. Best new promotion. This is the best new promotion in the Carolinas, according to Carolina Independent Wrestling. Who is it, Charlie? Intense Wrestling Entertainment. Who? Intense Wrestling <laughs> Entertainment. Who? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know who uh, the the Intense Wrestling Entertainment IWE. Uh, man, that's hard to chant. IWE. Yeah. IWE. <laughs> IWE. Uh, but uh, you know. Congratulations. Where are they at? Do we know where they're based out of? Do I have no. They? no. It, uh, their site doesn't provide any information as, uh, on the companies or the people who are winning them. They just kind of like, just here. To, here's who it is. Intense uh, Wrestling yeah. Entertainment. Hmm. Anybody out there who knows who these people are, have been to any of their shows, listen up for our websites at the end. Shoot us some emails, pictures, anything to let us know who these people are. And if, in fact, they exist. Uh, you know, it's not a slide on IWE. I, I, you know, I'm sure... They have to have some level of 
goodness I imagine yeah. for, for to win this uh, prestigious by God award, but uh, I, I don't know. I would be, it would be interesting to me to know how close IWE is to Charleston. <laughs> yeah, it's to how close they are to OSCW. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it may be a sister promotion or something. Well, anyway, congratulations to IWE. Uh, again, not a slight at them. We just don't know who they are. We haven't had any information on them, uh, but, uh, but good on them. All right, Charlie, we're up on promotion of the year of 20, 2010. Who wins the prestigious promotion of the year award? Do I have to say it or can you guess? I would imagine... They may have the initials OSCW. That would be correct. Right. Old school championship wrestling. Old school championship wrestling series. based out of Charleston. And we have covered them a little bit here on the radio program. Uh, they have uh, have won the promotion of the year from Carolina Independent Wrestling. Now, what we were talking about earlier before we started this list was basically everybody who's on this list. Is out of OSCW. Works out of OSCW. So I, I, I don't know. And, of course, these awards are kind of like championship belts. They really don't mean that much. Hint, hint, wink, wink. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but the fact of the matter is, that, you know, if you're going to put it out there as a Carolina-covered independent wrestling uh, award uh, and, and coverage of these promotions, you probably should get out and look at some of that promotion. Because, Charlie, we, yeah. you and I talked before the break, and I know you run at uh, SCW. You, run, you know, you don't run it every week. Right. So, you know, I, I, in my opinion, to, to win that award, you would have to run basically a weekly show. Uh, you would have to have uh, cons- consistent levels of, uh, of attendance. Right. And you would have to, you know, you would have to have special shows throughout the year where you draw huge. Now, you do have that. We had a couple of shows this year where we drew uh, huge numbers. Yeah. Uh, but, and, but this year, in my opinion, would be it would go to NCW, not just because they're my friends, but because they consistently run every week. They have huge shows, uh, for what every couple of months where they draw, yeah. you know, lots of people, and uh, and they consistently get good reviews from the fans. Uh, and the so, only limit to them on their big shows is their building. Yeah, right. Exactly. They, they they're in that one building that is kind of a little bit smaller. Yeah. And uh, you know that's the only reason they don't draw more than they do is because you can't get nobody else in the building. So exactly. <laughs> so you know it, I, I would go if it were me I would go with NCW. Right. I know APW is going to be making some moves this year going in 2011 going on television. So we'll be having to look at them a little bit harder next year as well. But right. congratulations to Old School Championship Wrestling for their award from CIW. Charlie, how much time we got? We're coming up on a break. How now many more we, awards we got? Oh, we I'm not sure. I have to look it up. We've got about five or six more awards. Okay. However, yeah. What, I, what we had planned on doing, letting everybody know, this this week we're not doing an interview. We're going to, I think we'll just continue this on and we'll talk a little bit about Ricky Regal, Charlie Lane, SCW, right. and some it's, of the stuff. It's our show, by God, and we'll do it how we want to. We're going to be right back here on Inside Wrestling Radio, helping you ring in 2011 right here on WLBG. All right, here we are back on the Inside Wrestling Radio. Normally this would be our interview section, but we're running a special show this year. Counting down all the awardees from Carolina Independent Wrestling. Awardees, that's that's a great new word, Charlie. Just made up right here on the spot. Yeah. We're back right back at you here on New Year's Eve 2010. Charlie, we're counting down. Uh, We're probably about, let's see, seven and a half hours until 2011. So uh, everybody, like we said earlier in the show, be careful in your partying tonight. Uh, remember, uh, Charlie, Don't me. <laughs> there are going to be a few of us out there who, uh, you know, you might not want to meet <laughs> in yeah. certain circumstances. But we're going to move on from that, Charlie. We've got a couple more awards here. And, and like Charlie said, uh, this would normally be the interview section of the program. But with it being New Year's Eve... And, uh, and it being kind of a year-end review here, show Charlie, we're going to run down the rest of the Carolina Independent Awards. We got to thank four more. Then I'm going to run down uh, Thomas Simpson's 2010 his achievement awards that he's All done. Right. And since Char- uh, Thomas has been part of the show here for uh-huh. most of the most of the year, on and off, and he's helped us book some guests, done a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff for us. We're going to run down um, his list as well. And at the end of the show, Charlie, we're going to do a special, uh, respectful thing for the people who we've lost in wrestling this year as well. So that'll be at the end of the show. But right now, Charlie, let's get back into the Big Carolina Independent Wrestling Awards. And if you're just tuning in, uh, Charlie and I have been going through the uh, CIW year-end awards that they do every year. This year's there. I think they've done it a little bit differently. They haven't yeah. gone as as regional. They haven't reached out. As yeah, they <laughs> haven't gone as regional as they have in the past. Uh, I think they're keeping it a little bit more local, and by local I mean pretty much one organization. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, we're up to the uh, referee of the year. 
Yeah. Charlie, and uh, who do you think is the CIW, well, who does it say over there is the CIW referee of 20,000, or 2010, sorry. That would be Scott Grady. Scott Grady. I don't, do, I'm not familiar with uh, referee Grady there. Do OSCW. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is he another OSCW? Yeah. Okay, got yeah. you. I, I have, I've been down to one of his shows. I've met him. Nothing against Scott and everything. I, I've seen him referee. He does a good job. And all. there was another referee at OSCW, the younger, shorter guy that may have been. I've gone down there and refereed once before. And like you say, I kind of think they, they need to branch out. Do I think I needed it? No, because I, I referee on occasion and not all the time. Yeah. Um, there's others up at NCW that maybe at least could have been nominated. I don't know if they were or not, but, you know, like we've said earlier, this whole thing seems to be a little one-sided. And yeah, and it's not a slight at CIW. It may just – because they have gone through some changes. Carolina Independent Wrestling, like we talked about earlier, what used to be a, a big website here, and the guy recently shut it down. And in the past, in years past, um, I remember that they would put up the not only the uh, the uh, categories, but they would also give you some uh, some you know some nominees. Yeah, I yeah. don't know who the nominees were for this for these awards. I don't know who who was even up for it or who even how they even did their voting process. I know some of it was handled on a on a message board there. Yeah. So you know I, I don't know. There's a lot of room for error here. If in my opinion, keeping with the true uh, spirit of professional wrestling. I would have given the Referee of the Year award to Boomer Payne because, <laughs> because they've been doing the angle up in NCW where Boomer has been refereeing his own matches and has been getting over to resounding success. Yeah. Or so, even on that one, on that note, uh, a good friend of ours, Cruiser Lewis, because sure. when Cruiser got injured and had to drop out of wrestling, yeah. he did some refereeing both at NCW and he come down and did some stuff for me. And, and having that aspect of being a wrestler as well, he did a good job. Yeah, absolutely, and, and Cruiser knows uh, every aspect of this business, and uh, so of course he would absolutely be in, be in, uh, an option as well. Uh, but but like I said, keeping with the true spirit of professional wrestling, where at my awards I would have uh, probably would have given it to Boomer Payne just because of the comedy aspect of him refereeing his own matches, Charlie. Right. All right. What are we up? Rookie of the year. Rookie of the year. Who's the rookie of the year for from CIW? According to CIW. According to CIW, it's Nicholas Gabriel. All right. Wasn't Nicholas Gabriel the most improved of 2010? I believe he was. How can you be r- rookie of the year and most improved in your rookie year? What yeah. are you improving from? <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. You yeah. see, this is my point about these awards. Again, not a slight at CIW. I'm sure they did as best with what they had to work with, but. Uh, I don't understand how you can be most improved in your rookie year. Yeah. Isn't the isn't the idea of you being rookie of the year the, that you improve improved over not being a rookie? Yeah, <laughs> in the wrestling business, if you're a rookie and you don't improve, we give you this thing called your future endeavors. In other words, you're fired. Sure, absolutely. Uh, yeah, um, don't understand that one. Don't understand how you can be most improved and rookie, but. Congratulations to old uh, Nicholas there. Charlie, we're up on Tag Team of the Year. Yes. Who's our Tag Team of the Year, according to CIW? The Soda City Bad Boys. Soda City Bad Boys. I know, I've never seen the Soda City Bad Boys work. I have followed them a little bit on uh, Facebook there, and uh, they have a, apparently a, a, a decent-sized following. Um, you know, not, are they OSCW or not? I think they do wrestle OSCW. Now, okay. I, I can't say for sure because... Uh, I, quite I don't, frankly, I don't know. I've never yeah. been to OSCW. I've I, been there once this year, and I didn't see them. That's why I can't say if they did or not. Right. So, you know, I can't really speak to, to those guys, but, uh, you know, congratulations to the Soda City. But where's Soda City at, by the way? Uh, Atlanta? That's where Coca-Cola Violence <laughs> so, Hangry is. Soda, <laughs> soda, soda. I don't, wanna, I don't know about Soda. Maybe old... Uh, CM Punk would like to go to Soda City. You know, he had had a lot of heat about spilling his soda, but that, yeah. that's another story. All right, we're up on the Wrestler of the Year. This is the best wrestler, according to CIW, of 2010. Charlie, who's our winner? Crucifix. Chris, I, you know, I don't have a problem with Chris. Uh, I think he's a good kid. He's had, he, he does work in a lot of places. Uh, he's very, always been very respectful. Uh, even, even back in the day when he first broke into the business, I remember him up at Brody's at the old uh, WWC up there in Greenville. Right. And uh, Chris was always very, uh, very respectful and would always listen, w- wouldn't run off at the mouth like some of these kids who think they know everything uh, do. Right. And uh, I think Chris even won, and we'll, I'll get into it here in, in a minute uh, on Thomas's things, but I think he even won something from Thomas this year. 
right. a, as being one of like the, uh, I think he won most inspirational. Okay. And because he's improved his game so much over the uh, the year. So that would have been my, my deal on that one. I've, I've seen Chris Affix when I've gone up to NCW and worked, and he has done wrestler of the year, maybe not most improved. I might would definitely go along with that because Chris has done a lot of improving over the past year. Um, I've seen some matches where he's just kind of, as we would say in the business, stumbled through it. And then over the over the past year, he's gotten better and better and better every time he's. Yeah, everybody better. I've talked to said Chris has really uh, tightened up his game. So congratulations to uh, Chris Fix for being the uh, wrestler of 2010, according to uh, CIW. There, Charlie, how much time we got in this segment? Oh, we got another minute and twenty seconds. What All right, let me get into a little bit of uh, of Thomas Simpson's uh, 2010 Independent Wrestling Achievement Awards. And, of course, those of you who know Thomas knows that in wrestling he goes by T-Dog. And uh, I used to laugh at him uh, hard about that. But I don't know how he got to be T-Dog. If you know Thomas, he's definitely not a T-Dog. <laughs> but anyway, uh, these are his uh, doggone Independent Achievement Awards for uh, 2010. And just a little note here. Thomas says that these are his opinions and his alone. If he offends you, do not take it out on anyone who's uh, who, who you consider to be one of his boys. Uh, if you do, you will forever have heat with him and his friends. So <laughs> this is just his opinion. Don't uh, take it as, as gold. And don't take it as the opinion of uh, Inside Wrestling Radio. Uh, we're just running this down here because uh, Thomas has been a part of the program and has helped us out a lot over the last year. Okay. All right. His Wrestler of the Year is uh, the Man Scout, Jake Manning. Now, I've heard nothing but great things about this uh, this Jake Manning. Uh, this guy's really got a good gimmick. He does a, a Boy Scout uh, leader type gimmick. Yeah. And uh, he says he's just really a brilliant gimmick. And I, I would love to see that. They, but Thomas is predicting 2011 will be the year of the Man Scout. Well, I'm going to have to hold you up on the Man Scout. We're up <laughs> on a break, and then we'll continue on with what you got after that. All right. We'll be right back here on Inside Wrestling Radio, uh, bringing in 2011, Charlie. All right, we are back inside Wrestling Radio. Charlie's rocking New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's rocking New Year. That's exactly right. Charlie, Charlie, as like he was doing last week here on Christmas Eve, he was uh, spinning the tunes for us. So uh, he, he's trying to be, I guess, moving into the DJ world. He's going to be spinning some tunes, maybe doing some mashups for us in 2011. We'll see how it goes. Welcome back to the Inside Wrestling Radio program, Charlie. Uh, everybody's favorite program, of course. Oh, yes. And uh, we're moving into 2011 here, Charlie. We're, we're about uh, a little over seven hours out from uh, 2011. And uh, we want to wish everybody a, a safe and happy, prosperous new year and all that good stuff. And we'll be right here with you as far as we know. Coming into 2011, Inside Wrestling Radio. For a little while, anyway. Well, yeah, we'll, we're around for a little while longer. We haven't got our pink slip just yet, but I understand that they may possibly be in the mail. We'll see. But until that time, Charlie, we're going to keep it rocking and rolling right here on Inside Wrestling Radio. And we were Before the break, we were, uh, and like I said, normally this would be the interview uh, portion of the program, but it is New Year's Eve, and we're doing some rundowns of uh, wrestlers of the year and all that kind of stuff, some lists some people have put out. We just got uh, finished with uh, Carolina Independent Wrestling's. And yep. now we're up to Thomas Simpson's Independent Wrestling Achievement Awards. Right. And uh, and when we left, we had done um, Wrestler of the Year, who was uh, Jake, Jake Manning, the Man Scout. Right. And uh, now we're up on Best Technical Wrestler. And according to Thomas, that's Stoney Hooker. And i got to agree with that. Stoney uh, really rocked and rolled this year. Had some great matches. He worked a lot for you, Charlie. And I think yes, he's he even is. your champion. He is. And uh, Stoney's done a lot of, of hard work. Uh, he keeps himself in excellent shape. Uh, he's just an all-around good kid, and he has a great uh, attitude. So, you know, congratulations to uh, to Stoney on the year that he's had. Uh, according to Thomas, the best tag team in the area is the Midnight Sensations. Now, I'm not familiar with the Midnight Sensations. They're Chris Rockwell and Sam Shields. Uh, according to Thomas now, and this is Thomas speaking, they have the look, the talk, the gimmick, and the moves to become the best tag team of the next decade. Uh, they were young and hungry and have incredible respect for the business. If they stay together, they can be the tag. They can be to tag wrestling in the tens what the Expresses were in the eighties and the Hardys were in the nineties and two thousands. Now that's saying a lot coming from Thomas because yeah. Thomas, uh, uh, as, as everybody knows, is, is big friends with the Hardys there, and for him to compare this new tag team of Midnight Sensations to them. Is, uh, is high accolade indeed. Uh, moving on, Charlie, most improved wrestler. I don't know how to say this kid's last name. It's Alex Avgerinos. 
Alvi- uh, Alex Alvarino. All right, you say so. Uh, <laughs> I've booked him. I know. Okay, gotcha. He, uh, I guess, he started in. Uh, at, uh, he started at a ripe young age, fourteen. Yeah, yeah. And, and, la- and that was last year. He was fourteen. Uh, and but they say he works. Thomas says he works better than the majority of people that he's books that he's been booked against, and he's yeah. really improved over the year. He's and, done some and stuff and in North Carolina as well. Thomas also. is predicting that Alex will be on television for a national company by the time he's twenty five years old. So uh, I don't big, doubt it. Big things uh, are in store, I guess, there for old Alex. Uh, best brawler, uh, whatever. Jason Blackman. I'm not a fan of the brawling, but whatever. Rookie of the year, uh, the over eighteen category is Lane Vassar. Don't know him. No. Uh, rookie of the year under 18 is Ryan Kidd. Uh, apparently, he's part of the new Omega that Charlie, I mean, that uh, Thomas is working on there. And I, Charlie, I think you have some uh, some dealings with. Yeah. Uh, most inspirational wrestler, according to Thomas, is Chris Fix. And we talked about Chris Fix in the CIW Awards section. Now, everybody likes Chris. Uh, Chris is a good kid, and I think he will do well uh, in his future. Thomas says that no one person has improved every aspect of their game this year more than Chris Fix. Uh, no one is as respectful of the business, and he and according to Thomas, uh, Chris Fix recently deserved the CI year, CIW Wrestler of the Year award, and I tend to uh, tend to agree. All right, now that's all his uh, good awards. The bad award this year, I saw that. Go ahead with that one. <laughs> Thomas always gives out a we can't say the word on the radio, but he gives out the what we'll say the D bag of the year award, <laughs> which is a bad thing. Yeah, <laughs> he's um. He's given this out to an individual that we've talked about here from time to time, and uh, I'm going to try to get through the reasoning behind what Thomas said here, and uh, and I'll try to clean it up as best I can. But according to Thomas, for treating Alex, who'd you say his name was? Alvarino. Okay, uh, for treating Alex Alvarino like garbage. Uh, when he wanted to take other bookings beside HVW, for lying about how he got uh, John Laurinaitis to HVW, for lying to everyone at WWE. Uh, that Thomas and uh, and this guy were friends, uh, and for uh, messing up a spot with Kane on SmackDown, and for being a fat uh, person who <laughs> who has who has to run his own show because no one else will work will book his sorry no working self, according to Thomas and all those were Thomas's quotes. Viper, you are the D bag of the year. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> and, and for guys out there uh, uh, on, on what Thomas has said, one thing I'll, I'll clarify, because I've had some heat in my own organization with people thinking that I don't know what's going on. I do. Thomas talks to me about everything, but I have learned from Thomas, when you got a booker, that's his job. Yeah. He does the card. He books the talent. My job is to make sure i got all the bills covered yep. and i got the advertisement out for the Precisely. show. <laughs> Precisely. Well, you know, Viper is what Viper is. I've invited him on to this program. Uh, I invited him on when uh, Oscar was on here yeah, yeah. to rebut some of Oscar's comments, and he refused. So if Viper wants to come on and, and defend himself, he's always welcome, just as anybody else is who have, may have a descending opinion with us and other yeah. people. All just right, send Charlie. us an email. All right, let's let's move on here. Uh, we, we're done with our year end stuff. I got a couple of raw thoughts I want to get to. All right, go ahead. Uh, but before I get to that, Charlie John Cena was injured uh, the other night at a Wilkes-Barre house show, and it appears to be a legit injury. Wow. Uh, Wade, they were doing a cage match with him and Wade Barrett, and after Wade began climbing the cage, uh, he stopped be- uh, because Cena didn't follow him when he was supposed to. Uh, Cena needed to get to the ropes to get up to stand up. They uh, Cena put uh, I'm sorry Barrett put Cena in his little finishing move there. Apparently, Cena had to be helped out of the ring. Wow. And uh, Cena did grab the microphone before the uh, end of the match and said that he may have to take some time off, but uh, if he does, uh, he's not going to have to, he's not going to be carried out of the ring there. So, right. uh, you know, stand-up guy kind of thing, I guess. So, uh, hopefully he'll be okay. You know, the, the WWE really depends on John Cena right yeah. now. He's the face of the company, as it were, so we'll see. But uh, best to Cena. Charlie, how much time we got? we got about a minute and a half. All right, real quick. i got a couple of raw thoughts here on the last week's show, Charlie. Uh, Tyson Kidd worked uh, Mark Henry there, and Mark Henry doesn't need to push. He doesn't need to be getting these wins. You're right. bringing up a, a, you're trying to bring up uh, Tyson Kidd as a heel. But by doing that, how do you let him job to the world's strongest slam? Exactly. It doesn't make sense. Now, take that out of the equation. Uh, Mark, uh, Tyson Kidd has this giant guy he brings out with him now, this uh, Jackson Andrews, mm-hmm. who's, who's I guess they're trying to prime as the new Diesel because he has that kind of look and he's just a monster, you know, huge guy. 
But he walks in the ring, misses a clothesline on on old Mark Henry there, and he takes the world's longest, strongest slam. What do you, you know? How is that getting the guy over? Yeah, you should have saved that guy, you know, and made him bring him in and have him destroy people and build him up to be your next giant, you know, guy because the guy has a look and and he could be a, a good heel. Like they did with Diesel. But why would you bring him out and have him do take the world's strongest slam to continue Mark Henry's world's most incomprehensible longest push? I don't get it, man. It doesn't make sense, and it's not getting anybody over. Mark Henry's never going to be over. Yeah. yeah. He's been that company. He's got a lifetime contract because Vince loved his world's strongest man, blah, blah, blah. But he's never going to be any more over than he was during the sexual chocolate deal he did back in the Attitude days. Yeah. So why give him? Why are you putting him over Tyson Kidd, who you just turned heel and who just said previously in the show to, 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 that guy, you know, to one of the other guys, watch what I do to Mark Henry tonight? What would you do? You took the world's strongest slam and you got beat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that doesn't make you a threat, brother. Yeah. So I, you know, I just don't get doggone WWE's book in there, Charlie. How much time we got? We out. We out. We out of time. All right, we're gonna come back here. We're gonna close out the show. I got a couple of more raw thoughts, uh, and I got a couple of things out of TNA, and uh, we're gonna run down the uh, people we lost this year, and that's all coming up next right here at the year end edition of Inside Wrestling Radio. All right, Inside Wrestling Radio, rocking in the new year. Charlie Lane. Star of the show, Ricky Riggle. Why you, why you come down to forget me, man? <laughs> this is not going to happen in the new year. You are, In the new year, the, the, my new contract that I'm about to sign here with this doggone radio station is going to insist that, I get, I, your name? that I get top billing on this doggone program. All right, welcome back to the New Year's uh, Eve edition, year-end edition of Inside Wrestling Radio. Charlie, we're about to take it home here on the big program. And listen, we want to thank everybody who has supported us over the last uh, eight months we've been doing this, Charlie. Um, we, we look forward to going into 2011. Uh, got a lot of things in store. Got a lot of exciting guests coming up. And uh, and just keep supporting us. You know, keep, uh, keep, keep us in your mind and keep listening to us here on WLBG on Fridays. All right, Charlie, before we take it home here, I need to uh, run over this. This is something I just found interesting. Uh, and, and it's a kind of a big news coming out of the last uh, last Monday night's Raw uh, when Otunga come to the uh, come to the ring there at the end of the show to confront John Cena. He announced that Nexus is under new management, sort of implying that he would be uh, the new leader of Nexus there. Mm-hmm. And uh, but as they came down, they kind of uh, confronted Cena, got to talking to him about his uh, about their deal. He offered him a truce. Uh, John Cena said, "Nah, I ain't having it," and uh, kind of blew him off there. Well, the Nexus started to leave, and uh, and then they turned around. Uh, kind of, Otunga kind of directed the Nexus to go back and jump Cena. They all did. They all hit their finishing moves on him. Then uh, Otunga took his uh, big Nexus wristband off and dropped it on the uh, floor of the mat. Uh-huh. And then out comes CM Punk. CM Punk comes out, uh, grabs the uh, wristband. I think he, he hit uh, Cena with a chair there. Grabs the wristband, put it on. So the deal is that uh, CM Punk is the new leader of the Nexus. Wow. So, you know, we'll see how it goes. I don't know what they're going to do with though he uh, with Wade Barrett there. I don't know what they're going to do with him, but uh and apparently the way Cena was or I'm sorry, Punk was talking on the show Monday is that he may be thinking about bringing in Sheamus. So they may be really getting ready to expand this uh Nexus into sort of an NWO type thing with bringing in established players to to stand alongside the new boys there but uh anyway we'll see how it goes charlie right. we're going to do an in memoriam section here and before we do let me get these plugs out because we want to close the show with this in memoriam section uh, we're going to run down the list of people we've lost this year and kind of pay them their due respects but before we do charlie uh remember we're still on twitter inside uh we're russell radio 860 on twitter twitter.com slash russell radio 860 uh we're also on facebook Got the big Inside Wrestling Radio fan page on uh, Facebook. Just type us into your search engine, we'll pop up. Uh, the YouTube channel, Wrestle Radio 860, with all our interviews from the past year are there, and all our upcoming interviews from this year, come 2011, will be there. And uh, don't forget to send us everything uh, questions, comments, suggestions, all that to 860 Wrestling at gmail.com, 860 Wrestling at gmail.com. All right, uh, again, thanks to everybody who's uh, tuned in. Over the past year, we really appreciate your support and stay with us in 2011. Charlie, uh, really quickly here, we lost a lot of people this year, and we're going to do an in-memoriam section to those people right now. This year, Charlie, alone, we lost Gene Kaniski, Jack Briscoe, Edward Carpentier, Kenji Shibuya, King Curtis Iokea, Lance Cade, 
Sandy Scott, Grizzly Smith, Angelo Poffo, Jim White, Hans Mortimer, Don Lewin, John Hill, Corsica Joe, Baron Michael Skikluna, Cantaro Hoshino, Kotetsu Yamamoto, Chris Canyon, Mr. Hito, Scorpio, Steve Stanley, Tony Bourne, General Skandar Akbar, uh, Luna Vachon, Anton Giesink, Mike Shaw, El Gante, El Hijo de Cien Caras, Jack Laskin, Ida Mae Martinez, and Skip Young. Uh, also notable this year, we lost Joe Higuchi, Ted Allen, uh, of course, Ricky Morton's father, Paul Morton, a writer for Georgianne Macropolis. And our thoughts and prayers go out to all those people that have been in and or associated with the business. Now, in memoriam, uh, in wrestling tradition, is they ring the wrestling bell ten times as a salute to all those that have been lost and have gone on. So, Inside Wrestling Radio, we're going to close out the show in just a moment. The last thing you'll hear is the ten bells in just a few moments, and our condolences go out to the families of those wrestlers, the fans of those wrestlers, and everybody involved. And, you know, it's always a tragedy when we lose one like that. Any Thing, thoughts from you over there, Ricky, before we... Yeah, you know, we, we lost all those people this year, and it's always a bad thing uh, when you lose uh, anybody, but to lose, you know, that many members of your quote-unquote family during the year always kind of hits you hard. So thoughts and prayers are with those people's families, and uh, best to everybody in the upcoming year. We'll be back next week right here on Inside Wrestling Radio. Inside Wrestling Radio.